You are. All right. The sound okay? Sound is Sounded good. Perfect. Good? Perfect. Perfect. Oh, perfect. Good. So this is Josh with Inside Selling, a podcast about selling without selling your soul, where I teach you how to sell from the buyer's perspective rather than from your perspective. Oh man, do we've got a great one for you today. On the show today is Claude Diamond. Claude teaches sales people how to be better salespeople using a methodology that he actually created called Guts. He is an interesting guy with a lot of cool shit to say. Claude, thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, thanks for inviting me, Josh. I always love to talk about sales, especially here at the beginning of a, a wonderful another year. Uh, sales is the million dollar skill. It's, it's, it's my, so I get on a soapbox and I love talking about sales. It, it changed my life. It made my life better. Claude is already talking and I haven't even asked him a question yet. This is yeah. how awesome this interview is going to be. So Claude, I'm, I'm shy and reluctant. You know that. <laughs> all the way from Colorado. Claude, you've got like a really good reputation out there. A great Thank you. A lot of number of testimonial videos. Um, how did you develop such a fine reputation? Um, I treat people the way I want to be treated. Uh, I return phone calls. Uh, whenever I do my videos on YouTube, I say, call me, I answer my own phone. Can I answer every phone call? No, but I really try. I return all phone calls. I, th you know, we, um, I'm really big on customer service and treating people well. And guess what? Uh, when you treat people well, they, they like you, they trust you and you, you build up a wonderful business as my wife and I have. And you're a runner. I see like things in the background, like what's with all the running? What's going on with you? I love to run. Uh, here's my... <laughs> picture of the New York City, Mar I've run five New York City marathons there. Um, I love to run. I run every day 10 miles. Right now it's 10 below here. In my, uh, I'm in my, my um, vacation home in Winter Park, Colorado. I live also in San Diego. And even when it's 10, 20 below, I, I bundle up and I do my 10 miles every day, treadmill and outside. Uh, I love running. I, I enjoy it. Uh, it's, it's peaceful time. I meditate. I listen to audio books. I learn. Um, I, just, I like staying, I like feeling healthy. And what's your next race? You got one coming up or? Um, I'm thinking, um, that's a great question. I'm thinking uh, San Diego has a, a rock and roll marathon, I think, coming up in um, February or something like that. I'm going to, I'm probably going to run in that. I still run marathons, half marathons. I uh, came in second place in the Silver Strand um, uh, race in Coronado, California, uh, last yeah, year, not too shabby at all. So Claude, take us back for a second. And there's so many sales methodologies out there. Take us back way back before guts started, where you started to have that first initial thought that, Hey, the world needs another sales methodology. How did you know something was missing? When was this? Was this, was this 10 years ago? Was this five years ago when you, when you no. first created Guts? How long ago I, was I'm, it? I'm older than that. I, you can't tell because I use really, I use good cheap hair dye here. Um, but um, I was the world's worst salesman. I'm the former world's worst salesman as I refer to myself. Um, I, I, got, I did what everybody else does. I was enthusiastic about real estate. Uh, I loved it. I read everything. I went to all the seminars, everything I could absorb. And I went out there and I talked to people. I did everything all the gurus told me. And all I got was rejection and think about it and I talked to my spouse. And I wasn't making any money, the greatest sin of all. And I said, something is really wrong here. What am I doing wrong? I'm working hard. I'm not the brightest bulb on the Christmas tree, but I'm not dumb either. Um, and what, you know, the only deals I got were the ones that the numbers game deal that some salespeople, you knock on a hundred doors and a hundred people say, no, knock on another hundred, but that gets frustrating after a while. So I had to, I had to find a better way. So this was back. How long ago was this? This was, uh, it would, this was going back. Uh, oh my gosh. At least to the, um, I'm going to say the early nineties. So the early nineties, you're selling real estate. You're get, you're trying to get listings. You're trying to get homes sold. Is that what you, is that what you were doing back then? I, I was in, um, I was a private investor. Okay. Uh, I've written some books on lease purchasing and other creative real estate strategies. I love real estate. Uh, the first deal I ever did when I was a kid, um, um, my gosh, I made $140,000 on my first deal. Eventually, uh, when I sold the house, I loved real estate, but it was very frustrating because uh, I felt like I was being manipulated and lied to all the time in sales and I had no control and uh, I had to find a better way. And unfortunately I met this wonderful man who was a genius. Is this Max? Are we getting into Max? Max? That was my, that was my mentor, Max. I've, I've written, uh, I've written a couple books about him. My first, uh, my first business novel was the mentor, a story of success about Max. 
So you, so you're struggling with this thing and you meet Max. Is he in your office? One of these days, like, is, how do you know him? How do you go? I, I heard of him by reputation. Oh, a couple, you know, when you ask about, Hey, who's got a, who's really got a grasp on sales and on real estate? Who's doing well? Well, and they said, you want to talk to this guy named, I heard a couple times his name mentioned and I called his office a couple times and they, they didn't know me and he's a busy guy and th there was no way I could get past the guardian at the gate. And then one day I just uh, went to the parking lot where their office was and he was, and I, met, I scared the hell out of him. I met him very early in the morning and he said, you're the guy who's been bothering my secretary. I have, is that you? I said, yeah. He says, go down the street, get me a bagel and a cup of coffee. I'll give you 10 minutes. Okay. I want to stop right here for everybody. So this is, this is pretty amazing, Claude. So, so many people want to know how to level up. And I always say there's a, there's a couple of ways, right? You could read information. You could do stuff with that information. But the third pillar there really is to find someone else who's done it. And hats off to you, Claude, for actually finding that person and being persistent. Because I think generally speaking, people think that's an imposition. And I, I have found in my career, so people are usually open. They're usually open to helping. They so, really are. Yeah. They really are. But you got to ask them. And the, the shortcut, my success is based because I shorten the learning curve. Instead of years and years and years of trial and error, making mistakes, I met a guy who was already a millionaire, who was already successful in real estate, who was the greatest salesman I'd ever met in my life. He would make more money in one phone call than I'd make it a whole year at my corporate job. What, what made him great? What made him great? Let's get into that. So he what, had this. He had this natural, intuitive ability. He just, he was what you call a natural born salesman. Okay. I'm not a natural born salesman. I learned it. I, I learned what it. What do you mean by that a natural born salesman? Because people think, oh my God, is that like the creepy used car salesperson? Like what exactly do you mean by that natural born salesperson? He'd get on the phone with people and he wouldn't sound like other salespeople. He wouldn't give presentations. He wouldn't beg for the order. He didn't use scripts. He flew by the seat of his pants. He had this natural intuitive ability to read people's mind. Uh, empathy is the key word here. And he'd, he'd, he'd make a connection with people so quick. And they, they, they liked people, just liked him. And that likability eventually evolved to trust. And in one phone call, he could get information, he could get qualification, uh, he could get into an honest dialogue with somebody. And, 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 he, and he'd either find if he, there was a way to do business and close them, or he'd get off the phone very quickly. And was and, your process, Claude, to like study this guy and sort of copy what he was doing? Because, hey, if it's working for him, it's working for me. And if so, was it uniquely Max? How did that translate to Claude? Because you have a very unique personality. Oh, thank you. What I did, what I did is uh, he, was, he couldn't even explain what he does. He said, I just get on the phone. I talk with people like Kibitz, whatever, East Coast guy. <laughs> for all you people that are not Jewish, that means I chatter because the Jewish, I, Kibitz, go ahead. I got to yeah, translate. You know, you're just the he'd be there, schmoozing, so. another good Yiddish word. <laughs> he'd love to get on the phone and he'd love people. He'd love to make money and run a successful business. And so what I did is I took what he was doing. I studied, I took notes. I studied a lot. I've taken a lot of stuff on psychology, human behavior, uh, I, I had reams of books on up there on my shelf about this. And what I did is I tried to break it down into three simple steps with a lot of sub steps. I wanted to develop a system, an outline for myself to follow, to do what Max was doing and eventually evolve to becoming a lot of what he did was came from confidence. Well, how do you get confidence when you're worried about paying the cable bill? Uh, you know, and, and what I did is I tried to uh, categorize what he was doing and that evolved into the gut sales method. So let's talk a little bit about that because I would imagine now there was quite a bit of work. You actually architected what it is that you were seeing. You yes. kind of codified it and you turned it into a blueprint so that you could understand it better and eventually um, help other people understand it better. So let's actually talk exactly. a little bit about that. And it changed my life. Uh, literally in a few months, I became a better salesperson. I got away from the used car kind of guy. The same stuff they're doing today. You got, we have so many people. I've been mentoring people for almost 30 years now. You know, basically, if people are giving the same old tired presentation. The prospect knows what they're doing. The prospect has their whole defense mechanism up already, their system, and they, and they manipulate the salesperson. They get their information, and then, they, and then they say, I'll think about it and everything else and dismiss the salesperson. And I wanted to get away from that. And basically, the guts keeps people off balance. 
it's, it's a surprise to them. They've never heard anybody sell like this before. Yeah. One of the things I saw when I was watching you is that that whole thing salespeople go through where someone is like, hey, I, I need to think about this. And normally, you know, sales purpose, so well, when can I get back to you? And there's this chasing game. But you have a really different approach. It seems like you kind of get to the bottom line and get to the truth. Role but, play with me. Go oh, ahead. Yeah, Tell me you want to think about it. Yeah, I love this. So this is this. Is, so guys, if you haven't seen Claude in action, we're going to give you a little taste here, but please go to his channel. There's hundreds of videos like this and I have made my wife watch all of them. Oh, They're your awesome. poor wife. <laughs> you know, hey, this, this, this sounds interesting. My property is up for sale, but I'm not exactly sure if the, if, uh, if the time's right right now to, to be talking with you. Josh, you're not allowed to think about it. What? I'm not allowed to think about it. You know what? I think you're more worried about my feelings than your own. Normally, Josh, can I tell you the truth, Josh, or should I just make you feel good? <laughs> sure, go ahead. Josh, when people tell me they want to think about it, what they're really, they're really more worried about my feelings than their own. We're here for you today, Josh. Let's do what's right for you. If you don't want to buy my product or service, that's okay. We can just say no. Okay, we don't have to we don't have to have me chase you and follow up and leave voicemails all day long. But the problem, but you and I are still talking because you had an issue, you had a need, a problem. How are we gonna don't we want to resolve that today? Or should I get off the phone? I, I love yeah, or is it over, right? Or is there sure do you want to fire me right now? Right. Yeah. So talk to me about the psychology behind that. I know you did some stuff with what's called transactional analysis. Tra transactional analysis. But talk Dr. to me about Burn. Yeah, yeah, because I was reading up on that as well, watching your videos. But talk to me a little bit about the psychology behind this, because I know, guys, your tendency is going to be to just go, oh, my God, I want to be what, do what Claude just did. That was awesome. But I want you to understand the psychology behind it so that you can make it a little bit your own. Claude talks a little bit about being your authentic you. You're not Claude. So, Claude, dissect what you just did there from a psychological perspective, just so people can understand what's going on there. Basically, this is what we call a pattern interrupt. This is a pattern that throws them off balance. They've never heard a salesman say, no, you're not allowed to think about it, which might, some people might interpret as rude or, wow, where did that come from? I don't know if I could say that. I say it, and usually there's a, a, you know, a moment where you hear the crickets, okay? Uh, where oh, They don't know how to respond to something like that. They've never heard it. I'm regaining control of the sales process at this very moment. And then uh, what I did is I made it, I fixed it. Then there's a rule we have in the gut sales uh, system. It's called, you can always fix it later. And so what I said to you is you're more worried about my feelings than your own. And, and then I went back, it's okay to say no to me, which is something I say many times. It's okay to fire me, Mr. Prospect. Okay. <laughs> I love that I love that line. <laughs> And this is reverse psychology also. Yeah. Part of pattern interrupts is reversing the psychology and getting, the, you know, getting them off balance so we can get, we want to get to the truth. Uh, uh, okay. And, and then it, this kind of leads also, if we're talking about psychology, into what I call my million dollar rule. This is the most important thing I teach. If your listeners understand the million dollar rule, uh, practice it, implement it, internalize it, and utilize it. They will be free the rest of their life. You don't want to talk about this, do you? You don't want me to share this, do you? <laughs> there he is doing it again, guys. See, that gives you a little taste. Claude, please tell us the million-dollar rule. Go. The million-dollar rule is people make immediate business decisions emotionally. They only justify them academically after the fact. If you can make people emotional, how many times have all of us in our life rushed to judgment, made a quick decision, purchased something, and then the next day said, oh my God, why did I buy this? Or I shouldn't have done this or anything. People make decisions, socially and business-wise, emotionally. When I ask questions and tell stories and use visualization, which is all part of the gut sales method, these are all ways to get somebody emotionally involved. I still have to justify what I'm selling. It still has to be of good value to them, of course. But what I'm trying to do is what the doctor does. When you go to your doctor, Josh, what does he or she say when you walk in the office? Hey, we're having a special on back surgery, hop on the table. Or what, are, what is, the, what is the, a true professional say right. they, when they, they have they, a patient or a client? They diagnose. They, they, they diagnose. Say, and how do they diagnose? They ask, they ask very poignant questions. They ask point, and now you're at the heart, the core, the kernel of the gut sales method. I practice and role play with my students. I teach them how to ask questions, but not like a police cross or an attorney cross examining. We, we implement something called stroking, nurturing, and empathy. We try to make those questions so they're softer, they're gentler, kinder, 
and so that the pro so that the prospect feels like wow this person's really interested in me and my problem and everything i'm getting credibility i'm getting information i'm getting them emotional and at the same time i'm working towards a close in the first phone call yeah that's what i wanted to talk to you about claude some of the some of the people that are listening to this sell enterprise sales solutions these are hundred thousand dollar two hundred thousand dollar things that probably aren't going to close close on one call you know why probably not? why not because typically there's five or six people involved in the decision and these are longer, typically longer okay. sales cycles. So how do you, you know, and with regards to asking questions, I actually back up a little bit. How do you get enough trust so fast to be able to get people to open up and share the answers to these questions with you so quickly? Because these are strangers. You don't really know them. This is typically a first call. Ask me a question, like in a role play. Let's do another. I love role playing. This is the way I teach. Ask me a question and I'll demonstrate in three words how I gain likability and trust. Right. Three so words. Claude, so Claude, tell me a little bit about, you know, why I should go with you. You know, I don't know. I was wondering the same thing, Josh. You know, we don't know each other. This is the first time we spoke. Why are we speaking today, Josh? Well, I saw that you uh, have some experience with real estate and thought, and, and now I see what you're doing. Now I'm kind of talking to you about why what were the I three might... words I said. I'm, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. See, salespeople feel, oh, I need to know all the answers to all the questions. See, we work too hard, Josh. We've got to get the prospect. What we're trying to do with this, all this psychology that I've developed inside the gut sales method, we're trying to get the prospect to become the salesperson. Yeah. Let me repeat you, you that. Talk about the, the prospect of, becomes the salesperson. You talk a little bit about the degree of desire as well um, in the book that I purchased from you. And you, this is really an, also an important piece. And I want you to talk a little bit about it. If there's no desire, it's not like everybody has to be a customer, right? You, you, you do get to a point sometimes when you're talking to someone where you determine their desire isn't high enough, but then you don't drag it on. You kind of end it and there's not this chasing. Um, you can talk a little bit about that. You can't, here's the, you know, most, I remember some of the old school sales classes and books I wrote, everyone's a prospect, everybody can be sold, which is a lie, you can't, not everybody has the need, not everybody has the authority, not everybody has the money to pay for it, not everybody has the, it's the wrong time, it's, they're, they're investigating now for something they want to do in six months, and not everybody has the character to get and keep a commitment. This is a lot of different variables in sales. Sales is complicated. Sales is, to me, I love it. It's such a challenge. It, it is, it's a, like a game of chess. Where do I move next? And it, 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 this is the most, I get such a thrill out of selling every day. I love it. I look forward to, give me a call, give me a phone number out of a yellow pages. or so. I'll call anybody and I'll have fun with it because I look at it as a challenge. And when I do make a sale and I close and I have a very high close, when I qualify somebody and I get them very emotional and I've qualified them for their needs and the money and the authority and everything else we talked about, my close, my statistically, my ability to close them goes through the roof. Yeah. And the, the biggest thrill of all in my life is when, when I close somebody and I make a sale with in the first or second phone call, follow a phone call. I'm telling you, I'm two feet above the ground. I mean, um, I'm a kid loose in a candy store with 20 bucks in my pocket, you know? Yeah, so, so let's talk a little bit about that, Claude. So from my understanding and watching a lot of your videos, these leads that are coming in are somewhat warm. These are listings or people that you found that have some expressed interest. A lot of the salespeople that are listening to this podcast are tasked with doing pure cold outreach. So they are going on LinkedIn and they are finding people that they think would be a good fit for the thing that they are selling and they're trying to reach out to them from a pure cold perspective. A lot of these people have maybe never even heard of them um, or the company. Um, so given that, what would your advice be or how would you go about attacking that if you didn't have, I'm not gonna say they're really warm leads because there's a thousand real estate agents probably vying for their attention, but if you're someone that's a salesperson listening to this that's tasked with spinning up a conversation with someone that doesn't know you, how would you start to think about that? Uh, hello, Josh, say hello. Hey, hey, Claude. Josh. Yeah, uh, you, we've never let's spoken let's before. Play, let's role play it. Uh, yeah, I love role plays. This is right, just, let's, let's do it. And, uh, nobody, and this is the way to teach people. Put them in a reel. We record it, it. We practice. We role play. Just the confidence is such, it's so essential for being successful financially in sales. So let's if I it. called you up, you had a house for a sale or something like that. Say hello. Say, so, hi, hi, this is, uh, this is Josh. Yeah, Josh, hi, this is Claude. Sorry to bother you, but you got a heck of a problem over there. 
<laughs> so I got, I got, you know how they crack up when they're like on Saturday Night Live? That's going to be me a lot of times when I'm role playing with Claude because I'm just <coughs> very charming. What do you mean I have a problem? You, you have that beautiful house on Maple Drive, right? Okay, I want to just pause for a second here because I, I want to just talk about this because this is really good stuff. You have a problem right there. That's how Claude opened up the conversation. So Claude, again, th is this what this is a pattern interrupt, right? This is kind of the psychology this behind your pattern saying, interrupt. This is pure I have five minutes. Can I take some of your time? This is pure gut psychology. If I call you up and I say, "Hi there, Josh Brown. I'm just reaching out to you today. I, my name is Claude Diamond, and I did, and I'm with ABC Real Estate and everything." What's going on in your head when you hear? Can I say bullshit? Yeah, sure. When you hear that stuff, what immediately goes to your mind as a well-traveled young man? It triggers the negative stereotype I have in my mind with salespeople. Yeah. I'm not your first phone call most of the time. If you had a house for listing or for sale or something like that, you've probably, or it's expired or something like that, you've had tons of people call you and they all say the same shit. So why expect a different reaction when you already have, the prospect already knows how to deal with you. you you're now subser subserving, subservient to their system. Yeah, Claude you're does playing this. playing in with their ball in their ballpark. I love it. Why you also do that? This, you also have this other great opener that I listen to with inbound leads where you'll call someone and say, well, why am I calling you? <laughs> <laughs> which, is, which is another kind of, and they're like, I don't know. And you're like, why? Well, you, <laughs> yeah. House for sale or something like that. So it's, it's, let's actually keep going with this. So, so uh, you have a problem over there. Uh, what do you mean I have a problem? You have that beautiful house on Maple Drive, correct? I do. Yeah. Notice beautiful house on Maple Drive. Always and, and I, I can't understand for the life of me, I had to call you, I was, I was just too curious. How come in this booming market that we just came out of the summer, how come that house didn't sell in this boom market, Josh? Well, we've had a real estate agent trying to sell it for about five or six months and we just haven't been able to get our, our price yet. So we're, I think we're gonna take it off the market for a little bit. Wow, you know, I just don't understand that. Houses in that, I know that neighborhood. It's a beautiful area, good schools. You got a park nearby and everything else. And, every, and I'm looking at the comps and every, you, let me ask you, that. why do you, you live in this house, right, Josh? We do, we do live there. How long you been there? We've lived there for about uh, eight years now. Why don't you stay another eight years? It's a great neighborhood. Well, you know, my kids are a little grown up. Okay, we want to pause here. Let's, let's, so you're, you're, you're getting me to talk. Why, why might I want to, just to break the role play, you're kind of asking this question to see, is there a, is there a desire? Is there a desire to change? I'm trying to get to your need, your motivation, your EQ, we call it, the emotional quotient. I went in the complete, we call this a redirection in guts. Redirection is when we do something the complete opposite of the other 99%. Okay. Uh, most, nobody would say, oh, well, let me help you sell this home and everything. I said, why don't you stay in this home another eight years? And now you're justifying why you're selling it. And that's information I need to know if I can sell you or how to sell you. I love that. You're so giving guys, me the bullets for the gun. So, right. So if you guys are in software sales, a way to apply this, if someone's using an existing lead generation tool, you might say, well, what's wrong with it? Why not just keep doing, why not just keep using that, you know, tool that you have? Yeah. But to say, and, well, the price is too high. You might say, well, we're probably more, you know, what is yeah. it, you, know, you might well, want that's to another good one. Oh yeah. We're how much people, are, well, how much is your mentoring program? It's very expensive, sir. <laughs> Why do you think people pay me all this money to mentor them? You, you know, and boom, they said, well, you must be good. I said, you're right, sir. You know, and yeah. we just, we have so much, I have so much fun because I don't react in the typical salesman way. I'm trying to get the prospect, once again, to become the salesperson. Let them do all the work. We have a rule in my new book. It's called The uh, Rules of the Gut Sales Method. And one of the rules is that the 75-25 rule. Who should be talking 75% of the time? Not you. Not me. And that's hard. I got a big mouth. <laughs> you know? And, but it's hard. the hardest thing for me is to ask the right question at the right time, the pivotal question that gets them emotionally involved. I get their attention, I get them, uh, I get their EQ high, um, and, and they go from a two or a three to an eight, nine or 10 on the Claude barometer, the EQ barometer, and now they start telling, well, I have to, we have, Claude, we have to sell it, 
uh, because my let's wife. Let's go back. Let's go back into the role. Let's go back into the role play. Yeah, we have to sell it because my kids just moved away. They they both had a couple little kids, and we want to be closer to them. So we want to move and and be closer to my two children with their two oh, kids. Oh, but there's no rush, right? I mean, there's no if it if it happens in a year or two, that's fine, right? There's no urgency, is there? Well, no, we want to see them because they're little, and we want to take advantage of them. Get on an airplane a couple times a year. What's the big deal, right? We also, we're not into the weather anymore. It's a little bit too cold for us now, and you know, it's also a little expensive for us here. We, it's a little bit, taxes are a little bit lower in Florida. You know, uh, we, we, we have a bond income that's getting taxed uh, too high and we just want to, you know, kind of get out of here. Um, so okay. as as it's possible. And you did off the role play. You yeah. just gave me three to six, what we call needs and greeds. Three to six. Need. You just gave me the ammunition to sell you. And now, right now, just in a three, four minute conversation, I can get a, a, an upfront, a tentative close or a, a subtle commitment from you and back in the role play. So Josh, if I understand you correctly, you want to sell a home, you want to be near those beautiful grandchildren, you're sick of getting on and off airplanes and all that. You want to be in a warmer climate and, and you want to, there'll be tax savings and everything. This makes, suppose you found a situation where you could sell your home quickly and make all this happen before uh, in the next 30, 60 days. They, you wouldn't want to take an action right away, would you? I, I would now. I want to go I'm sorry, what? <laughs> I would. Oh. So, Claude, I want to see again what you did there. You wouldn't, you wouldn't. So instead of saying this, I know is everything you say, Claude, is intentional. So when you said, no I know, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't want to take, you wouldn't want to take advantage of this. Again, you're using the, the sort of reverse, you know, no is safe, right? It's, it's and you gave it all to me, Josh. You told me how to sell you. You gave it to me. You said the taxes, the weather, the grandchildren. You gave it to me. All I've got to do is ask the right questions, and you will give it to me on a silver platter. And what I, uh, one of the tricks we do when you're talking, if I'm on, I'm, a lot of my sales is on video. On we have so much uh, different video applications now. I will in front of you. I will do this writing in my notebook. Okay, which which is kind of a stroke to you. Say, wow, is this guy fascinating? This prospect is brilliant. I got to write this all these words of wisdom, these pearls down. But I want to make I want to make something very clear, Claude, because I don't want people to feel this way. And and this is how I felt when I first saw you. But I want people. This, this is not a thing that you're doing just to get a sale. You're I think you're genuinely interested in helping people. And this is not like you're not doing this stuff just to make people feel like they're special. I think you do. I think you do like people and I do think you are interested and curious genuinely. I don't think it's an act. Oh no. I love, I, I, I love people. I love talking. I have yeah. friends in 18 different countries now through my mentoring program. Um, I love my clients. I, yeah. I become close to them, maybe too close. Sometimes you get involved, but I, I truly, uh, I'm the luckiest guy in the world. I am doing exactly what I should be doing in life. Um, doing some, my own sales, teaching people how to give good phone and um, I, I get up in the morning. Every day is Friday for me. I have a great business. I, I married my high school girlfriend. We live in Colorado, California, North Carolina, and I get to help people. I mean, um, I'm grateful. Yeah. So, Claude, let me ask you one more question because this is, this is super interesting. In that same area that we just walked through, you had mentioned that you saw that they had a home that was for sale. But in, in our world, we call that a, a trigger event, some reason to reach sure. out. So, for salespeople that are listening to this, that they're not selling real estate, but they're selling uh, let's say a software that helps someone generate, you know, more leads or so a software that helps them get more email addresses or phone numbers. There's not a host, a house that's listed per se, but would you recommend finding some type of a trigger? Uh, so if, if this person is the VP of sales for a software company and they don't have a for sale sign out in front of their home, mm -hmm. how would you go about formulating your trigger? Uh, uh, reason for the call, I guess. Would you try to find something that you think they might be struggling with based on what you know about VPs of sales and software? Yeah. You have yeah. to identify a need or greed. If you're in an industry with a product, okay, that's, that, that solves a problem in that industry, don't go into the presentation. Don't beg for the order. Don't tell them you're in a sales contest and your wife has never seen Puerto Rico. You got, you've got to, you've got to, you've got to communicate with somebody and address a true earthy need. Is it to save them time, save them money, to yeah. increase their sales? And you might want to ask them, Josh, let me ask you your opinion. Some of the people in your industry have a real problem with generating quality leads today without spending a, a great deal of money. How do you, how do you, that isn't an issue for you right now, is it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I love, and I think you're going to a really good point. So many salespeople, I call this premature pitulation disorder. Uh, you know what I call it? 
pre do you suffer from the agony of premature presentation? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the same thing, right? It's, just, it's, it's You can't go into the pitch mode until you have that degree of desire up and the art really is asking those, is asking those questions. Something else I noticed about you, Claude, is your personality. Like you can ask these questions. You almost remind me of Don Rickles where he's insulting people. I love so, Don Rickles. It's right. funny you said that. But he's doing it in a way that's charming. Like only Don Rickles could say some of these things and people are laughing as they're being insulted. So you say to someone, you're not allowed to say that. Your delivery and your tone is also very important. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, you, uh, humor, if you have a, uh, make people laugh, uh, keep their, tell stories. We tell a lot of stories sometimes. Storytelling is a really important way to motivate people to get their attention. Uh, if I'm speaking to someone on a first phone call, say, you know, I just spoke with one of your competitors. They have a big problem in, in I won't mention their name, but they have a big problem on keeping um, uh, control of their leads, generating new leads, and the costs are going through the roof. You're not having that issue also, are you, Josh? Because I, yeah, you, you wouldn't be interested in a solution to that problem that's cost effective, would you? Well, and then someone says, what do you mean? What are you talking about? Boom. And, and then I'll, t I'll go into more storytelling or something like that. Yeah. I've got to get their attention. I've got to earn the right to give them a presentation. But blindly giving a presentation without getting facts, without creating emotion in that person is a waste of your time and it's demeaning. They just dismiss you. Oh, well, leave me a brochure, leave me a card or anything like that. You know, well, that, I, sir, I didn't bring a card. When I get home, I'll put one in the shredder for you, okay? You know, or I, you know, I gotta talk to my wife. Hey, you know what, that's a good idea. Let me ask my wife if I can sell you. <laughs> yeah, so like, I'll use humor. Yeah, you're, you're super good at that and so, but. Some people would say, I'm not really funny. I mean, and what happens to me when I do coaching, I notice that people off of the sales world, when you're having lunch or dinner with them or having coffee, they're like, they're personable. But somehow when they get into the sales role, they, they sound different, they start to talk in jargon. What sort of strategies or tips do you have for people to find their voice? Uh, because I think there's, there, there's this perception that they have to act a certain way and use certain words when they're quote unquote being professional salespeople. Our job is to make people comfortable, to relax. There's something called the inner and the outer salesman. The outer salesman plays a role. This is back to transactional analysis. I play a role in the whole process on the outside. I'm gonna try, my job is not to manipulate, but to make them so comfortable that we can have that honest dialogue, that honest, and I tell them, I, I, one of the first things, we have three steps in the gut sales method, the agenda step, and I tell them right away, hey, I wanna ask you some questions, see if I can help you here, Josh, and if I can, great, that's how I make a living, but if I can't, would you do me a favor and just fire me? <laughs> Could you do, you don't have to say you'll think about it or call me later or whatever. Just say, Claude, I don't need it. It's okay. You won't, I'll cry a little back to the car, but I'll get over it. But can we have that honest adult to adult dialogue? And so what this is doing is it's solving the number one problem that I see in sales, which is this chasing. Like, it begging. Sound like it I call sound it begging. Begging, but you don't, are you, so you don't have a, a pipeline full of opportunities that are like wait in some sort of waiting stage. You kind of get to the heart of the matter at the end of every call to determine if this is going somewhere or if it's not, and if it's not, you, you just took, you just took Betty Lou out on a great date. You laughed, had a good time. You brought it to the doorstep. She closed her eyes and tilted her head like beautiful women do. Are you going to say, Hey, I'll think about it and come back tomorrow for that kiss. Or are you going to go for it in sales? We have to have guts. We've got to go for it. Sometimes we've got to show courage. We've got to exude confidence and it, it, it's better to be shot down at least while you're trying rather than never try at all. I got it. And so many salespeople, I think, are a little apprehensive to that because they don't want to come across as being uh, pushy. So at the end of your calls, it's Claude, okay to be pushy and aggressive. Here's my, the title of my next book, Josh. Sales is dangerous. You've, you've got to take risks in sales. We've got to do this. It's not that we're trying to manipulate people. We're trying to help people. If we truly believe in our product or service and we know it can help people and save them time, money, and, uh, and everything else, shouldn't we be assertive and aggressive in getting that point across to people? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Sa I, I sales is not for the timid. I'm sorry. You got to flip a switch sometimes. I get it. So, Claude, at the end of your sale at, on this one call close, you are, what is the commitment exactly? The, is the commitment list the house with me? Is that the, is that the, is that the ask? Is that what goes on with your calls it, at the end? In a sales scenario, you mean? Yeah. Or like for you personally, when you're closing someone, 
the sale is what someone says, I want to list the house with you at the end of the call. You say, would you like, I work with, yeah, I work with a lot of realtors and brokers and real estate investors. That's how I got started uh, basically in business. And we're looking to get a tentative, a commitment. We're looking to get another appointment. We're looking to get something up or get out. You know, I can't sell everybody and I don't want to waste my natural resources, my time on situations where they don't have the need, they don't like me or my product, they don't have the authority or the money to make the commitment. I don't wanna waste one minute of God-given life in an unproductive situation because why are we in business, Josh? To make money. Today. Today. So at the end of that call, the ask is, um, can you list it? Will you list this house with me? Is that one of the re, one of the asks that you I'm have? I'm going to ask a hypo. Josh, suppose there was a way I could help you solve your problem in the next 30 days. How would you feel about that? Uh, next 30 days would be good. Would be great. Uh, you know what? I feel very, I've made a decision, Josh. I want to help you solve this problem so you can see your grandchildren, so you can have the money to buy another house and move, so you can get the tax benefit. I've made a commitment, a decision that I want to work with you. How do you feel about that? <laughs> I feel good about it. I feel good about it, Claude. Which means? I'd like to, uh, I'd like you to help me. I'm sorry, what? I'd, I'd like you to help me. I'd like, I'd to, like help to help me. you too. Does that mean we can go ahead and do business today and get yeah. this thing started so you can see the kids soon? Oh, God, it's so good. So, Claude, when I watch you do this, it, it, this seems so natural, Claude, but I guess people should take these principles and these ideas, which is why I wanted to get to the psychology and sort of make them, you guys are not going to be Claude but you could take these ideas and you can make them you. Um, Claude, if you had to summarize, you know, sort of the, the most important trait you think a salesperson can have today, and I know there's a lot of traits, but if you had to summarize and, and pick one, one of the most important traits for success, if someone wanted to be a high performer like you and as successful as you, what, what do you think that one thing would be? I think they should hire a mentor like me or somebody who is already doing something successfully so they can emulate it. They, you've got shorten the learning curve. Don't go out there and get beaten up the rest of your life. If you can learn from somebody, and this is what I did. This is one of the smart, and I'm a guy who believes in education. I've gone to law school, uh, business school, and, and seminars, uh, and everything I learned that gave me this wonderful, prosperous, wonderful life is I learned from an old man who was just a phenomenal salesperson. Learn from somebody who has the right to teach you. And I'm not talking about a guru program. I'm talking about one-on-one -on -one accountability. Learn from should, someone who has the right to teach. And I, I think your point there too is find someone that's actually has some proof that they've actually are successful. You mentioned yes. Max is a million dollar producer. Don't Go, ask someone. me for references. It's one of my favorite role plays. Oh yeah. Let, yeah. I, I love this one. So uh, this is great. So Claude, I'm not really sure if I want to hire you as a coach, but can you give me some references so I can check it out? Yeah. Thank you, Josh. Can I thank you so much for asking that question? This is our first phone call. You don't know me that well, and I don't want you to rush to judgment about something. Let me. And so, thank you for asking that. You know, the great thing about the references, they're my my clients, and they're my invisible sales force. Suppose, I, how many would you like today, Josh? I mean, three or four would be good. How about five or six or more? Well, oh, five would be perfect. I'll get you five and I'll send you those five today. And please be respectful of those nice people's times who will say very nice things about me. But jo frankly, Josh, when, after you speak to those people today, what happens when you and I get on the phone at six o'clock this evening? If it well, meets with your expectations. Well, I, I'm going to have to, you know, uh, if, if, assuming it's okay, I'll just, you know, chat with my wife about it and we can, we can sort of, you know, see if we want to move forward. Okay, so let me, uh, let's pretend, you're newlyweds, then you were just married, you don't know what your wife is going to say when you tell her all the great things my client said about me? Oh, uh, no, we've been married for a while, she'll probably, uh, she'll, she'll probably agree with me. She probably will. Tell you what, why don't you, why don't you bring your wife on camera right now, or call her up, or why don't you speak to her right now, and then, and get back to me, and I'll give you all the references you want. And then we'll say, and then at six o'clock today, you can say, Claude, I want to move forward and change my life and sell my house and sell my computer software and double my income or Claude, you're fired. Can we do, can we make that commitment? Okay. So one of the things Claude did here really well is oftentimes objections are false. They're like disguises. There's some truth behind the objection. Is it really the truth or is it a brush off? And I think what you did really masterfully there is you kind of got to the truth. It's really not about the references, that was just a smoke screen. Mm -hmm. There's really some other stuff going on. And oftentimes if you just give up the references, it doesn't serve the prospect because there's other things and unhidden uh, things that are on the prospect's mind. So I think that was really masterfully done is to, is to stalls, kind of get behind the truth. Stall, Josh, stalls and objections are opportunities to close. 
You give me any stalled an objection and I'll turn around, you know, good point. I'll stroke you. I'll nurture. Good point. I'm glad you brought that up. If there was a solution to that problem, if you could find it, what would happen next? This is an opera. I love stalls and objections. They have opportunities to close right now. And if they can't close them and they start doing that backpedaling, then you've got to do more work or you, you get to fire them because you're not going to do business today. Yeah, that, that is, that's phenomenal advice. And I think when we, when we don't do that, oftentimes prospect or salespeople feel they get thrown off balance by objections, but yeah. you know, watch your Give videos. Give me an objection. Like, do another role play. I love role play. The, re the reason Claude's able to do this is because he's practiced. There's only seven or eight or 10 probably objections that he hears all the time. And so he's never yeah. thrown off balance. It's like an actor memorizing their script. He kind of knows what, what's in the, what's what's coming so someone says let's say in software claude maybe i'll throw one at you that you don't know um one of the things in software sales is uh the the customer wants to go month to month they want to pay a certain amount of money every month and the salesperson needs to sell a year they don't have a month to month option so the prospect might say i don't want to make an annual commitment we have a pro josh you know what i'm glad you brought that up and it's not the first time i have but we have a problem what, what do you mean the problem, the problem is we have a minimum commitment of one year in order to, to, to give you the right software with the right training and background on this works. Is that a deal killer for us? Should I get out of here? Because we have to do a one-year minimum, even on a month-to-month. -month. Mm. I know this, you know, I, I, you know, and if I was in your position, I'd feel the same way. I'd like to try it for two, three months if it doesn't work great and everything. But in order, you came to me with a set of, of problems. Remember, you said that, um, your system doesn't do follow-up, your right. system, it's inconsistent, and the other company had no customer service and things like that. We can solve all those problems for you right now, Josh, but we can't get past the one-year commitment. Is it over, Josh, or can we do business and, and show you how to make a lot more money? And scene. I, again, what Claude's doing here really masterfully, if you're not picking up on this, is he's, cut, he's getting to the truth very, very quickly. Um, and some of the problems that I see out there, and, and I'm guilty of this myself, is we're a little afraid to ask those questions and therefore we get off the phone and we're like in this land of hopium and we're, and we're chasing. Truth is a pattern interrupt. They don't, we don't, we're scared to use, do you ever talk to a wonderful senior citizen and they just say the truth and everybody shout, oh, what a grandma say at Thanksgiving dinner and everything. I love people who are outspoken who tell the truth. They shock our senses a little bit, you yeah. know, but it's still the truth. The, the truth is the truth. And why not, say what's on their mind. See, we have to be actually mind readers. I use the word empathy. What are they thinking or feeling? It's really a form of mind reader reading. Let's, let's say, let's put the truth on the table here. Let's say there is a white elephant in the room here and let's stop ignoring it. I love it. Someone says to you, Claude, I'm going to do one more. Um, I don't have, I'm, I don't have right the time right now. Caught me at a bad time. You probably never will. <laughs> no, I'm just, you know, in the middle of a couple of things. Can you call me back? Yeah, um, I don't know. I don't know. What if I do call you back? What what is it we want? It, why, why are we talking anyway, Josh? What's the issue here? Yeah, so, help so me out. Great. Help me out a little, Josh. I really don't understand. I got a note here to give you a call. I'm calling you now. You're busy. I understand that. I respect it. It's the New Year's and everything. What's the real reason we're talking anyway? It's fantastic. And so many salespeople will say, "Yeah, I'll call you back. When should I call you no, back?" No, you cannot a... be subservient to the needs of the prospect. You have to be the doctor in the room, the authority figure in the room. You have to have respect. Remember, if you were in, if you had a toothache, and I was your de and, and I was your dentist, and I said, "Josh, I only have one appointment at two thirty today. Can you make it?" Guess what you're going to do? You're going to make it. You're going to make it. Why? Because that is a. Uh person of authority and my tooth hurts and I need to get it taken care of right now. And we have to go back to the needs and greets, the EQ, the emotional quotient um, on this. We have to go to the heart of the matter. If we are subservient, oh, I got all the time in the world, Josh. Uh, whenever you want, I can call you and everything. What are you really saying to that person? I'm, I'm needy. I'm desperate. I'm, I'm not, needy. Not yeah, needy. exactly. We cannot go through life. We cannot be successful in persuasion and influence unless we get their attention, get them emotionally involved and get commitments or get out at our own choosing. We can't sell everybody. We've got to work smarter than our competition and stop wasting time on inappropriate prospects. Absolutely. Claude, you were right. You said this would go 45 minutes. I said it would go 30 and you said no. I, we had I nothing to talk about, right? You're right. Claude, 
if people want to learn more about you or your products, uh, how do they find out more about you? Uh, they go to my web. Your audience is so intelligent. All they have to do is Google Claude Diamond. Um, I have a web page, ClaudeDiamond.com. Um, can I give something away for free? I don't like the schlock or sell stuff. Oh my I, do gosh. Like, I do like, I have a wonderful book for the new year. It's my first book, The Mentor Teaches. Uh, the mentor teaches success. Um, I'll give your you know, lovely, good looking, intelligent audience. I'm going to give them a free copy if they call me 970 281 5151. Call me up, Skype me. I'm easy to find, and I'll send you a free copy of my really motivating book. It's a rags to riches story. It's very exciting. And even better if you have a home that's for sale. And when you call oh, or for sale, or you just need, you need a little help in, in sales, you need a little vitamin Claude. <laughs> Sales is the million dollar skill. It is right. the one thing we, we should focus on more that we, that we really don't. I love it. Claude, thank you so much for being so generous with your time. You continue to be an inspiration for me. Thank you so much. Dude, that was awesome, man. You're, you're a special guy, man. Are you familiar? So how long have you been doing the coaching? About, um, I think about 30 years now, actually. Are you coaching just real estate agents or just all people? From oh, different uh, uh, finance people um insurance network marketing i'm sorry one-on-one on, one on one coaching i do i have a one-on-one -on -one program we we talk for 30 minutes 